What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Geek, and today we are looking at the Wave 2 2020 preview, and we are looking at the enhancements to the timeline. So the timeline has been a great feature, a welcome addition to the unified interface and to a lot of users, but there are still a few usability bits that we still want to see from the timeline. This latest update allows us to do a few more things, and that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you the difference between the old one and the new one, and some of these new features coming in October. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in my model-driven app here. Uh, this is an, an environment without the Wave 2 2020 features installed. So I can show you this uh, as it is today, uh, and then I will show you what we have in the preview at the moment. So this is a timeline. So we have all the things you're used to in the timeline. We can search timeline for emails and stuff like that. We can um, we can filter the timeline. So we can press, press this button and filter on different things. Uh, we can uh, click this button and we can refresh the timeline or we can um, change the sorting order from, from new to old, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so in this instance, I'm not gonna do anything um, but just kind of show you this. So I've got three different things in here. I've got an email, I've got a, a note, and I've got a task, and if I click on email, it expands it and shows me all the email, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, this is this is a welcome addition from the social pane that we used to have, um, and gives us a lot of extra features uh, and some cool stuff around, like showing and hiding different entity types in here, uh, which was, again, a much requested feature of the timeline. So this is good and everything, but let's see what we have in the wave Wave 2 2020. So if I switch over to my other app, this is my uh, environment with the 2020 previews uh, features switched on. And this is what the timeline looks like here. So this is a slightly wider timeline. That's just the formatting of this. And this is on a, a quote and not on a contact. I'm going to show you. But I do have a couple of extra buttons. So for instance, I have this button right here, which is expand all records. And if I click that, what that'll do is all the records in the timeline, it'll automatically expand them and show me all the data. So if I click on this and we scroll down, we can see this is an email. It's showing me the entire email trail from what uh, from what this, this record uses. Uh, and I can see all that here and I can continue to go down and view all the emails that I have to click on each one individually to expand and close them, uh, expand them up, close them down. So this gives me a great usability feature where I can just click this button and go, right, let me see everything. Similarly, um, once you click it, it changes a little bit and you get the ability to collapse all records. So click that again, and again, all these are nice and neatly closed together. Um, and I don't need to, um, and I can go in and click each one to expand the single one that I want. And I may not want to scroll through maybe larger email chains. So it gives, me, it gives me a couple of options, and that's what users like, is they like options to be able to do these things. Back up uh, under the three, uh, three dots, we have a few other options. Um, so we still have the refresh timeline and the sorting from new to old. Uh, but we also have this new option, which is always show emails as individual messages or always show emails as a conversation. So at the moment, I've set it to always show emails as individual messages. And as I scroll down here, you can see that we've got uh, we've got an email, we've got a note, we've got another email, we've got a note, then we've got uh, an email, an email, and a quote close activity, and then another note. So as you can see, kind of I've got these emails and this email, this email and this email, they're all part of the same conversation. So I've got a note in between them, but these are all part of the same conversation. So if I scroll up and I change that option now from show emails as individual messages to show them as conversations, what that does is that actually shows you a visual link between these things. So as I've scrolled down, I do have my first email. I do have a note, but then I've got all of these emails grouped together as a conversation with a line between them all to show you that this is one conversation that you can like click through and find out what's going on. Just underneath that, I have show more, so it'll show me even more emails, so it'll default to three, but then allow you to expand this and see another three or you know even more after that. So I've clicked that now. And then underneath that, you'll notice I've got the note. So this does actually 
slightly skew the timeline a little bit. Um, so because this last email uh, here is from the 13th of the 8th, uh, but um, 13th of the 8th at uh, 4.56, the note is actually at 4.56 as well. When we view this as individual messages, uh, this appears above here. But in this instance, what we're doing is grouping things together by the latest. So this is actually the latest activity in this group of emails. And therefore, the group of emails is shown above this note. So that's actually really important to remember and to look at when you do this, um, because it may confuse people slightly about why things are not in the right order. They are in the right order, but this option allows you to group things together. And that's why all of these are showing, even though this one's from, you know, April this year, and we're now in August. That's why this is showing above this note, which was uh, created in August. Uh, but I can simply go back and switch that myself here and then everything will kind of be in the right order so we've got that one there and then we've got the email above it so that's what that kind of does so that's a really cool feature i really like this feature it, it gives us some more versatility and it gives us a few new settings that we can use so if i switch over to the maker experience i've got a a form open here the, again this is another wave 2020 preview environment switched on um, and I've clicked into my timeline here in the, mi uh, in the middle. And what I have is I now have a few more options show up here. So I don't know when these options showed up, but they're in my 2020 environment. Uh, and I can go through and I can select the record types that I want to see in here. So we've got appointments, campaign activities, that's all cool. Uh, we have the sorting, so we can sort by all these things um, in here. We have the create activities used now, the quick create form or the main form. And uh, notes says coming soon. Uh, and posts also say coming soon. So uh, watch this space for, uh, for new releases. Uh, but the important thing here is actually the advanced settings. So if I expand advanced, again, we have uh, some of these things so we can actually quickly create note, notes or quickly create posts is what it's given the option to. I've never seen that before. So that's pretty cool. We have expand the filter pane. So this is um, when we click this, do we expand the filter pane and, and show. Expand the filter pane by default. So when you load up the timeline, this will automatically show. Enable the search bar so you can search through your timeline and find things. Expand all records by default. So that is what I've just been showing you where I can select this and then everything is going to be expanded by default. This is going to be across all your users. So make sure you want to turn this on before you actually turn this on. Otherwise, you'll be quickly coming in here and turn this off when users say, hold on, I can't scroll through the timeline because everything's expanded and it takes me forever because there's a large email chains. So something to be aware of. Uh, and we also have enabled the watch your, what you've missed summary. So that's when you return to a record, it pops up at the top of like things that have happened since you've last been to that record. So we now have these features inside of the modding experience. And I do think some of these are actually new uh, features which aren't in the uh, old interface as well, uh, especially this expand records by default because that's a new feature. It's only in the modern experience you can switch this on and it is only um, only for Unified Interface. So good things to be aware of there. So what do you guys think? Did you like this feature? Did you like the enhancements that they've done? Are there any more enhancements that you'd like to see Microsoft implement? Let me know in the comments down below. If you thought this video was useful, if you could like and share it, that would be appreciated. If you've not already, hit that subscribe button and stay up to date with all my latest videos. And I'll see you next time.